All right, guys, I remember hating this back when I did uh, second year in organic chemistry at the University of Waterloo, but I realized they still teach it, so we still got to teach it to you. You need the MO diagram for N2+. Now, they could have asked you for the um, MO diagram for any of these atoms here, or rather diatoms, Li2, Be2, F2, Ne2. These are just the way that they teach you MO diagrams. All right? Now here's the first thing you got to remember. When you're asked for the MO diagram of a diatom like that, there are two different MO diagrams you basically have to memorize. For atoms from lithium to nitrogen, it looks like this, where you have your two S orbitals coming together to form a sigma 2S and a sigma 2S antibonding. I shouldn't have uh, drawn that there. That's a mistake. Sigma 2s and sigma 2s antibonding. Your 2p orbitals come together to form these. And yes, you're just going to have to memorize these and the order. You have a sigma 2p and a sigma 2p antibonding. And you also have a pi 2p and a pi 2p antibonding. Now, there are two of those. Notice six orbitals became six orbitals at different energies. This is just how MO diagrams work. And honestly, I've never figured out any reason for it other than that's just the way it is and we accept it. So if you're asked for the MO diagram for N2+, you're basically going to regurgitate this diagram. Let's see if we can do that. Well, the two 2s two orbitals come together to form a sigma 2s and a sigma 2s antibonding. Check. My two p's come together to form a pi 2p and a sigma 2p. And we need corresponding pi 2p antibonding and, oops, sigma 2p antibonding. It's ideal to draw in those funky lines that they always seem to show. And then you've got to fill it with electrons. N2 plus brings, each N brings five electrons with it, so that makes 10, but we have a plus charge, so we're taking away one. We need to fill this with nine electrons. Now, what I haven't shown you is that there's a 1s orbital that's already filled here. But nonetheless, in my valence shell, I need nine electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six. Notice that I'm spreading out the electrons so that there's one in each equivalent energy orbital before I start doubling up. 7, 8, 9. Now, that's the MO diagram for N2+. You may be asked for something called the bond order, which is the number of electrons in bonding orbitals minus the number of electrons in antibonding orbitals divided by 2. In the bonding orbitals, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 electrons. In antibonding orbitals, I've got, oops, one, back to bonding. I didn't realize that was bonding. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I've got seven bonding electrons. How many antibonding electrons? One, two, and that's it. When I do that on my calculator, I got a bond order of 2.5. A bond order with a 0.5 in it isn't super stable, and so N2 plus probably isn't super stable. FYI, I told you this was the MO diagram you had to memorize for lithium to nitrogen. The one for oxygen to neon is pretty much the same. The only difference is that oxygen to neon has the pi 2p at a higher energy level. But chemist Nate, why is that the case? Because these MOs and their relative order 
are based off of the differences in orbital energy levels, and those are different for every atom. It just so happens that the threshold to switch from this to this is between nitrogen and oxygen. Accept it. You're a mature, grown-up person. I know you can. Best of luck to you in your MO diagram.